Hello, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Wilson with One S, being Call Me Mel, and today I'm actually gonna be showing my face in this video. Hello, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Wilson with One S, being Call Me Mel, and today it's gonna be a not so fun video, but hopefully it is helpful, and hopefully you guys can actually use this information and help your plants. So I will be actually treating my Monstera for the rips. Not a good time at all. It's actually been about a week since I've been starting to treat it. And I just felt like I wanted to provide you one video where I can give you options on the type of treatments that you can use. Of course, there are a bunch of options, but these are just, I think a handful. I have five or six in total. And then I will be taking my Monstera out into my backyard and actually treating her and spraying the plant with you. So stick around, give it a thumbs up if you do like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's go help my Monstera. So the first mix or treatment that I'm going to show you is one that's more of a DIY. This one is going to be one that's probably the most affordable and easiest. So basically, all of these recipes you would use in a one gallon jug of water. So this one in one gallon of water, you can put one tablespoon of oil of your choice. And then um, you would slowly put some soap into the mix. And this just helps for the oil to disperse and not rise to the top of the jug right away. So you just slowly put in this, the soap and then shake it and make sure that the oil stays dispersed enough to like be able to go to the other plant or last you the whole plant, especially this big of a plant. I also should be a bit more specific that the soap is actually dish soap and I use just original dish soap. I don't use any that have like extra fragrance or anything fancy, just like antibacterial dish soap. So that's what I use, but you can do your own research to know what each soap does and which ones are more harmful to the actual foliage of the plants. Now, the next DIY recipe, I guess you can say, is very similar to the one that I just talked about, but now you're gonna add a few things. So this one's called tobacco juice, and actually my mom was the one that recommended this because she uses it in her outdoor garden. And it is basically just one cup of tobacco. It could be just fresh leaves or like cigarettes, depending if you do smoke or not. And you would mix in just a bit of pepper. So about one teaspoon of pepper, like crushed pepper. And then you would also add your dish soap just a little bit. So you're gonna take those ingredients and you're gonna let it sit overnight. And then the next day, you can use the strainer to get rid of all of the residue of the tobacco and the pepper. And then you're going to put it in one of these bottles, the spray bottles, and then you're gonna use it for your plant. So that's another option if you're into that mix, but there are other mixes or other products that you can buy. So now I'm going to talk about two products that I buy from the store and there may be a very similar product where you live, like if you're in the States or somewhere else. So I'm gonna show you those two. So here are the two products that I have. Now I'm gonna talk about this one first. So this is the insecticidal soap by Safers. And this specifically says for house plants, fruits, vegetables, and other things. So you can use it for indoor and outdoor. Now I feel, I find that this one is a little bit less intense, I guess you would say. Uh, I'm kind of working up the intensity of the treatments here. So um, I, it has potassium salts of fatty acids. It doesn't have any type of oil in it. It's very, I would say more soapy, obviously but specifically it is for bugs. You may have something like this in your hardware store, your big box store, even your grocery store. So you can check out this option. I'm in Canada, so this is one option we have here. I know that a lot of people in the States are using specifically a neem oil spray that we do not have here, or at least I haven't seen it visible like in stores. I have to buy it online. 
but you may have like Captain Jack's in the States as well. That is another option uh, for spray. I can link it in the description. So a variety of products that you can use just depending on the name. Now this one is the product that I've used most recently just because of the thrips. And what I like about it is that it actually already comes with canola oil. And I read the instructions and I read what it what it's used for and it actually shows that it will take care of any stage of thrips. So that's why I really like it because it specifies the bug that I'm actually trying to treat on my Monstera. And the other thing that it says is that it is specifically for indoor and greenhouses. So if you look at the bottom, it says for use indoors on houseplants and in greenhouses. So I think it is more geared towards um, that versus like a garden or an outdoor bed and stuff like that. And ultimately, I just like that it says it's all stages of thrips and I'm going to show you how I use this because I will be spraying the plant again today. So uh, stick around because I will be spraying it specifically with this one. But essentially you're going to be doing the exact same thing with all of them. Depending on your infestation and depending on the strength of the spray, you will be doing it or spraying it every 7 to 14 days. But depending on the infestation, you may be actually doing it one to two times a week. And to be honest, I'm doing the two times a week because I just keep seeing the white thrips, not necessarily the adults, which are black, but I am seeing the little white thin guys um, hanging out on my Monstera, which is why I feel like I should be treating it approximately every three days. So we are gonna go do that. I'm gonna take my Monstera outside. Okay, so we are outside and I'm gonna spray her down. So this may seem simple, but I mean, come along for the ride with me. So I'm going to spray the top of the leaves, but I'm going to make sure that it's not so much liquid that it's going to just fall off or drip off. So this says you have to shake it every time you spray. So you just wanna shake it a bit and then spray. Oh. Make sure you're at the right setting. So I'm gently spraying on the leaf. I mean, it's pretty slippery, so it's hard not to get it to slide off. But I want it to stay on the leaf as long as possible so that it can grab onto those bugs. Okay, and I'm gonna do one down here. So I'm just very gently Brain. the whole leaf and make sure that it's able to sit on it for a bit and then over here just so that it sits on it and then I can go ahead and wipe a bit of it off Okay. And this is an example of what it looks like on the front part of the leaf. And you can see the discoloration, you can see little white dots that they've left behind and the browning as well. So this is um, showing damage of thrips. So now I'm going to be taking a microfiber cloth. It's nice and soft and won't do any damage to the leaf. So I'm going to do is actually use one of my fingers and I'm going to be rubbing up against the veins of the leaf and right on each side right in between the crevices because these guys are going to be hanging out in groups so you want to be very meticulous because one guy can just or actually they're not guys thrips are females and apparently they don't need men to reproduce so 
and so then and they reproduce pretty quickly which is why you want to make sure that you try to get as much of those bugs off as possible and also if you see little brown stains or little brown discoloration on the leaves that means they pooped on the leaf so not only do they suck up all of the nutrients in from the leaves they also poop on them just for uh, you know fun I guess so that's one leaf and I'm gonna do the exact same thing to all of the leaves and now I'm gonna show you what I do to the back of the leaves so this is some of the damage that the thrips have caused so you see that browning um, that's basically poop from the thrips but the discoloration is essentially them also sucking nutrients from the leaves. So now we're going to spray the back of the leaf and these are the parts that I'm talking about. So right in between these veins and then right on the sides of these veins and then also the edge of the leaves and the section in where the leaf and the stem connect. I forget the name of it. But all of this too, you wanna to spray. So again, just spray it gently it's kind of hard because it's obviously it's upside down. I'm going to try to spray it as much as I can to let it sit on there. You can tell right that I'm just kind of spraying gently so that it grabs on. And then same thing as the top. I'm just going to let it sit for a bit but just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to be wiping right in between here with this cloth and I'm going to be wiping right on the sides of the veins like that okay but again you want to be able to leave the solution on there for a little while that way the bugs can get covered in it they will essentially suffocate <laughs> um, and be able to uh, just kind of fall off and die so that's how you do the back sides you do also want to spray the other parts of the plant just because just in case there's eggs or little guys crawling around, then you also want to get everything else just in case, right? So, like I said, I'm doing this about every three days just because I just don't want to stress about it. I just want to make sure I'm trying my best to save my plant because if you know, you know, she's my pride and joy. And I'm just, I am quite upset that the thrips decided to choose this plant, but I digress. It is what it is. So hopefully some of these solutions will help your plant. You can leave a comment down below and let me know, depending on where you live, what country you live in, what product you use. That way other people can check it out as well. So thank you so much. And again, thank you if you've subscribed, give this video a thumbs up. And I show my face in this video. I know that in the last two videos I didn't. So here I am and I will see you soon.